Welcome back to Foxfire Forest, Alaska. Spring has finally sprung here in Zone 3, which means there is a ton of work to do. The snow is melting, and our orchard is starting to come alive after almost 8 months of dormancy. Spring, or breakup here as most folks call it, <laughs> means t-shirts at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, sunshine all day, as long as there's no smoke or rain, and sunshine all night, every night, for three months straight. Spring Alaska also means best friends and bubbles. We joke that mosquitoes are our state bird, and they come out before the snow even finishes melting. Huh? Yeah. And no spring in Alaska is complete without a nice May snow. The storm actually lasted almost three days, and it has been a very cold May. But enough about the weather. Let's talk about how our livestock animals have been doing over the last two weeks. When we look back at the old videos of Tuck, it's hard to believe he's even the same pup. As he gets older, his markings are fading, but our boy is just as handsome as ever. With the snow melting and the arrival of mud, keeping Tuck clean is absolutely impossible. One of Tuck's favorite pastimes is digging up any freshly disturbed soil. <laughs> Miraculously, every morning, Tuck's fur is fluffy and clean. He looks just like you're seeing right now. That's really incredible. In addition to the normal obedience training and perimeter patrol that you've seen in past episodes, over the last two weeks we've been putting Tuck Tuck outside by himself in small bursts, so it remains a positive experience for him. We cleared a better spot for Tuck Tuck, up higher on the hill where it's more dry and lighter. So we're going to be moving all of these fence panels and the chicken coop up and around the hill to right here where we'll be able to access them a little easier and we want to make chicken tunnels into the forest someday. Tuck and I headed out to the vet for his final checkup and dewormer. Even though it was only about 45 degrees out, we blasted the air conditioning the whole way there. Tuck met some very nice people and had a little bit of an accident because he got really excited. Once we got into the room, Tuck was worried about a very loud cat in the lobby, but he was a perfect gentleman with the vet. With the roundworms and ticks hopefully gone for good, Tuck is doing an amazing job mapping out the property and learning his role on our developing farm. During last week's episode, the chicks were still in their original brooder, but not anymore. We built them a chicken village using materials that we just had in the garage. I started by laying out a few tarps to contain the bedding, and then I made four corner posts with trash cans full of our re-amended flower pot soil because they're really heavy. Next, I cut two old boards that I found to size and wrapped a roll of chicken wire around it. I used the handles of the trash can to hook the boards and then slowly unwound the chicken wire until I completed the circuit and trimmed it to fit. I dumped a ton of spruce wood shavings down his bedding, and then I also found some skinny trees that I screwed together to make a frame. Lastly, I laid a reed fence panel over the top of the frame to prevent the chickens from flying out and also make them feel safer. They seem to really love the dappled light. And then there was nothing to do but put the birds in and see how they liked it. This new enclosure gives them plenty of room to stretch their wings. Before we headed out to Mother's Day brunch, the girls stopped in to give the chickens some treats. Jesus. 
So the big red comb and wattles mean that Snow White is actually a rooster. We just didn't know it yet at the time. Yeah, that's her comb. Comb for comb. Here it goes. <laughs> I got it. You got him. <laughs> So we're happy with the way the new enclosure turned out, and I think it should work for about another month until they can go outside full time. Old Tuk Tuk here seems to approve. That's gonna do it for us folks. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, be good.